Hey everyone, Remin X here, and we're going to talk about Weapon X. <laughs> Remin X talking about Weapon X. It's actually, you know, one of the inspirations for my name. I know, I know. I'm corny as all get out, but we're going to start talking about the team and a couple of quick warnings when you're going for red stars and levels, because there's a couple of things I want to make sure you understand that are built into these kits that you may not be aware of. So we're going to start with some stats some overall functioning, and we're gonna talk about the, the Envoy video in depth again. So first things first, I broke down the Envoy video and went in detail uh, specifically for the Heroes for Hire matchup. I think most folks are just tired of Heroes for Hire on War Defense and want this team to just end their misery and their alliance pointing fingers at why you failed on this defense, right? Yes, I th think that's gonna be the overwhelming comments here in this section. But more importantly, we're going to go through a very, very specific warning here. So we're going to start with with um, Silver Samurai, and we're going to take a look, and we're going to use the, the seven red star stats as an indicator. Maybe my face is in the way, but I'll have to move it in a second. And we're just going to go ahead and just do um, Striker, just for all intents and purposes. This is going to give him the same level. He's a skirmisher, obviously. Uh, and when we calculate this power, the, the number we're going to look at is this health, 688. 876. And this is going to be important for one key reason. When we take a look at a certain other character on the team, we're going to take a look at Omega Red. All right. So his health is, well, it's a lot higher, right? Well, his health is what, 688, 876. Oh, but he gets a 50% boost passive everywhere, right? So he's at a million health. Wait a minute. Oh, don't, wait. What, what happens in war here? Hmm. Wait, he gives, so he has the 50% max health, but in war, he gives the Weapon X allies 50% max health. Oh, oh. Okay, so that Envoy video I showed you guys, that was a coin flip, the fact that they targeted him first. Yeah, so the way that this works is he can potentially get uh, ability blocked instead of Silver Samurai if you build them at the same stars and red star level. Now that probably won't happen, but a lot of folks are going to be targeting this character and potentially even building this character as a go-to for Dark Dimension 5. They'll probably be on a lot of high priority list for bringing up to, I don't know, G16 to bring into this mode, which suddenly makes him the target for Misty Knight's ability block. So stay tuned. We're going to go through a lot of little key factors here, how to make that potentially not an issue, but going forward, we'll have to watch that. So one of the things I've been kind of breaking down and I've been leaning into this for my ISOs and been testing this to some great degree because I, I, I went through the order of operations and I tried to figure out what made the most sense. Now, I do realize that the, uh, the, the Weapon X team benefits greatly from crit, especially when we're talking about Sabretooth. Sabretooth is uh, a very, very powerfully reworked character. He is surprisingly deadly. And I think uh, if you guys have faced him on war defense on any of his uh, possible combinations of teams, He's probably shocked and awed you when you're sitting there going, all right, I just going to hit that quit button right now and then tell my alliance that there was an anomaly detected and hopefully they won't kick me at the end of the week. Um, not that it's happened to me. But that's the reality of it is he's just been decimating your offense because he's just it's just hard to calculate uh, even with the testing because of the way that the war swings happen. If you guys haven't taken a look at my previous video, I was talking about how the practice mode, while a great addition, doesn't really give the factor of deflex and more importantly, the 10% extra uh, stats that these guys are getting on defense. So they can literally wreck you and surprise you uh, in that regard. So when we're talking about this Weapon X, uh, I kind of thought about a couple of key actions and we're gonna walk you through it. So one thing I want you to understand is I don't like a coin flip. And the reason is I tend to lose RNG including red, red stars. I mean, I'm, you guys might say, I, oh, he's got 40, 47 red stars. You know, that's 
You know, what is he complaining about? Well, if it's going to go wrong, it's probably going to happen to me. That being said, Silver Samurai will only ever get a 50% chance to assist. So the idea that you can make the whole team strikers and him skirmisher is interesting, but probably only if you're punching down. And the reason is they have to overcome insane amounts of resistance on the enemy team. And if they do, the magic really starts happening. And so one of the things I want to talk about is that Sabretooth's early ability in landing any one of these bleeds on the targets, not only is it going to be able to help with the damage, but it's also going to trigger the passive from Lady Deathstrike. Now, Lady Deathstrike's bleeds are also important, so you'll probably make her... Uh, make her a skirmisher uh, and have additional components. So you're stripping additional buffs when you're finally bringing a target down. But more importantly, uh, I, I think when it comes down to ISOs, I prefer the skirmisher because they're just gonna be so fast that it isn't like changing those to what's happening on Infinity Watch. And, and, and if you guys referenced the previous video, video, the best version of Infinity, Infinity Watch, thanks to Numa, uh, is with three skirmishers, and this is for war offense to be able to start landing the debuffs reliably. And looking at the stats, they don't necessarily have the same focus that you're getting out of the get-go uh, without landing the debuffs. So Lady Deathstrike Pass, if you guys heard me reference it, you guys probably can't see it very well. All right, so you're, she's going to have a necessity T4, which is the lower resistance by 50% for all enemies with bleed. It is a big deal, and it's probably only the, the only reliably reliable way to make sure that all those things happen, including buff flips and, and whatnot. So when we went back to the video, we broke down the order of operations and went through some of the nuances of the fight to kind of understand what was really going on. And so one thing that happened was um, Wolverine's main job while he does decent damage and he can do a, a, amazing amounts of damage and bleed, I mean, his rework, you know, left him with 42K damage. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not bad, right? So his bleeds are gonna be substantial, but realistically he wants, you're using him to set up the debuffs from other characters, specifically from Omega Red and uh, Lady Deathstrike. And the reason is he's plucking off the deflex early in the fight. So his basic with, um, will will actually as a striker will let him get a speed up so then he gets additional turns to pop those off in between character actions so the speed up was actually relatively important on him that being said uh it, it comes down to to the fact that most people won't have weapon x at a high enough level to challenge heroes for hire right away and while I do think you're going to be punching up 150 plus relatively easily, there are going to be some opportunities that will probably present themselves for improvement, specifically if Omega Red gets chain targeted, gets ability block, winds up lower health than other characters, and gets pinged into oblivion. And that is a possibility that can happen th the way the team is built, um, although they are fast enough to help counter that. And so... The overall testing that I'm going to be doing, remember, I, I don't want you to spend blue ISO and waste them. I like Skirmisher on Sabretooth because of the fact that he is going to get the chance to land those debuffs. He doesn't have a lot of focus otherwise, and those bleeds are important to start the chain rolling. Because Wolverine acts second, he'll get the speed up for the next set of turns, so he'll be going relatively quickly and be able to act in between some additional uh, characters. So obviously Omega Red um, uh, does, does go first. So he's a striker and there's nothing that's gonna boost that. And then, and then you've got Lady Deathstrike and then Silver Samurai. So um, one thing people ask me is why not make a couple of them healer? And that's interesting. Like there's some really good theory crafting around this team. And the idea that a character could be a healer and then start plucking off those bleeds, especially from Silver Samurai, and potentially un uh, unleashing his ability to do insane amounts of damage with all of those charges. I just didn't see the the need because it looks like it's it's being cleansed right before he goes anyway. So uh, Lady Deathstrike does that in normal operations. So I just think you don't have to worry about that because any any 
any debuffs he has on himself are going to be cleansed. Uh, other than that, I'm looking at at Skirmisher for Lady Death Strikes. She might wind up being a striker with those bleeds, but I think you really want her to land those debuffs. Other thing about Sabretooth is in some of the other matchups that we're thinking about, including Infinity Watch, he can land offense down. He can also flip defense. Um, he could also uh, flip uh, defense up to defense down. So there's a couple other ways to play him in some additional matchups that tend to lean me towards Skirmisher. Plus, I tried to honor what we were already using him as so that even it, so if you do build him for your M Rauders because you're not getting Weapon X this time around, that you'll be able to, to slide him into another role relatively easily. And Omega Red is the, quin, uh, the quintessential uh, uh, striker in that category. The fact that he does all those things, sustains all those uh, debuffs and adds plus one, he's just insane amounts of uh, power as a striker. So that's where I'm leaning for that. This team is already taking up a ton of T4s and I think they all have value. So what I will tell you is in my experience, whenever there's a war offense team out there, I tend to reserve between seven to 11 T4s for the team. And that is a lot. We're talking between 1400 and 20, uh, uh, yeah, and, and 2200 T4s. And this is the thing about war offense teams is they're, they are definitively one of the most important teams to build to win wars. Now, whether or not your alliance is war focused or raid focused, these characters aren't getting a lot of use in the Doom Raid. Uh, I haven't found our use for Silver Samurai only because at 2.2, the Axemen just tend to do things a lot better. And once you get spun up, he, he just stares at them, wondering why he can't get a turn. And so even Omega Red might be a flex out for the boss, but only if you don't have your Axemen built up. And for those folks who are hesitant to build uh, a team that might wind up, you know, uh, outdated in, in three months. That being said, love the team. I think they're a lot of fun to play on war offense. I think they're a lot of fun to theorycraft on war defense. There's about three or four solid different defenses that feature this team that are giving people fits. And so I'm gonna tell you, I'm having a lot of fun playing with them in RTA. They're just a little bit slower than the current meta. So you have to use some tools to speed them up. But I will say that overall, this is shaping up to be one powerful team. So I'm excited to see when Lady Deathstrike comes out later on uh, this week. Remember, I do things that you don't have to, and I've gone absolutely crazy for Weapon X because, you know, they put an X in there. 